Well, we said we would bring you the final resting place of Louis Armstrong. Here we are, Flushing Cemetery. You know, one of the greatest things about living in New York City is you have access to these cemeteries and great famous names. I mean, famous people, athletes, uh, entertainers, actors, writers, musicians. There's so many to come and visit, so this is awesome. Uh, we are here now at the final resting place of Louis Armstrong. Uh, one of the first things we noticed when we came to the site was the birth date of Louis Armstrong. And if you pan down here, is July 4th, 1900. July 4th, that's the birth of our nation. As you know, Jazz was born in America. Well, then what better person to be born on July 4th than the father of Jazz, Louis Satchmo Armstrong? By the way, Satchmo is short for Satchel Mouth because he was noted for a very large mouth. So he kind of just acquired that particular nickname of many. Of course, he came to his prominence in the 1920s. He uh, was not only a great trumpet player and coronet player, but he was also a very good singer. And he used his raspy voice in improv with melodies and lyrics for artistic expression. Remember that Louis Armstrong was also living at a time where segregation and racial uh, uh, tension was high. And he's considered one of the first African Americans to cross over, as they say, where his color became secondary to his music and to his uh, infectious personality. Louis Armstrong did indeed die on July 6th, 1971, at his home in Corona that we saw earlier. He died of a heart attack in bed. We come to the site, and we come to a simple site, nothing too elaborate, a beautiful, uh, square, polished, black granite. Um, I really do love the touch of the pillow and the trumpet resting on the pillow, and of course his signature handkerchief that he always carried or clutched in his hand when he played to wipe his sweaty brow. You can see people have left stones, which is a very common, traditional uh, uh, feat. Uh, people do this to, to kind of just remind us that they visited and that they were here. People have left coins. They've left Mardi Gras beads, and this is very uh, uh, appropriate due to the fact that Louis Armstrong was born in New Orleans and being a jazz player and New Orleans and the association, so it's appropriate that they leave this. And there's a little box here, and kind of open it up and yes it's a saxophone so that's kind of uh, clever another person of course lying beside Louis Armstrong was Lucille who he would loved and adored uh, Lucille decided as we mentioned in the uh, previous videos that Lucille decided to donate the home that he and her lived in to be turned into a museum so that people could come and visit where Louis Armstrong lived and where he kind of spent his, uh, his final years. Um, Flushing Cemetery uh, is a unique place and, and uh, a cemetery that is well cared for and maintained. The final thing I'd like to share is uh, Louis Armstrong's funeral. The funeral was large and it, it, it also involved some key pallbearers. Everybody from Ella Fitzgerald to Frank Sinatra, Count Basie, um, Dizzy Gillespie, who by the way happens to be buried in this same cemetery in an unmarked grave, which is near next to unbelievable considering that Dizzy Gillespie is considered the greatest jazz musician of all time. Um, I don't know how Louis would feel about me pointing that out uh, over his own grave. Uh, I don't think he cares much though at this point. But the bottom line is that he's, Dizzy Gillespie is here and the pallbearers were highly involved and, and, and made that ceremony, that funeral, quite memorable. Um, this has been a lot of fun for me, uh, being able to go from his home to the, to the school named in his honor and then kind of finally doing a full circle by coming to Flushing Cemetery and visiting his final resting place. I hope to bring you more, or, or not I hope, I will bring you more videos on these great, great personalities that everyone is familiar with and knows. Thanks for watching.